Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about when to index a um, relational database management system database. Uh, specifically, our examples are MySQL, but what we're talking about in this brief clip is broad and general enough to apply to any RDBMS. So from previous videos, we already know what an index is and why it is useful and it is useful because it is probably your best weapon in terms of combating unacceptable performance and improving performance generally uh, however it is not a weapon to be used willy-nilly it has some potentially negative performance consequences if you use it inadvisably or incorrectly so in this video we want to talk about when does it make sense to index and when does it not? And we don't have any specific hard and fast rules that can be applied to every situation, but we do have some rules of thumb. Uh, and so let's talk about them. The first rule of thumb, the first issue is write is read versus write regularity. So how often are you reading from the database versus how often are you writing to the database? Uh, read is high. That favors indexing. Write does not. And let's talk about why. We, in a previous video, talked about the fact that a an index is not terribly dissimilar to a back-of-the-book index. And so imagine you are charged with writing a back of the book index it's a pain in the neck once the uh, the text is done to prepare that index but imagine how frustrating it would be trying to prepare that index while the book is being written each time a new sentence is written it shifts everything around and it requires you to go back and figure out how your index has changed it would be incredibly frustrating well, the, not completely analogous, but fairly similar in the case of an RDBMS index. When you write to the database, the index needs to be substantially recreated in a way that is time consuming and that can negatively impact significantly your performance while performing writes. So if you have a high proportion of writes relative to reads, then that does not way in favor of indexing. If your database is read only, and you know, some are, uh, not terribly interesting, but some are, then indexing, index your heart out to the extent that you have space. The only downside of indexing in those cases is if you do not have disk space to maintain both your data and the indexes that you would like as well. So there's the first major factor. How much writing are you doing versus how much reading are you doing? The second is, um, well, this is, this is sort of depressing because it's yet another sort of flavor of the term cardinality. Cardinality of attributes in question. Okay, so we've already heard a couple of definitions for cardinality in this class. And I know you're not nuts to hear about another one, but basically when we're talking about cardinality in the context of an attribute that we're trying to decide whether to index or not, what we're saying is how many unique values are there for that attribute in the database relative to how many total observations there are. So imagine we're talking about a million person database and the attribute in question is gender. So you could, you know, and it's the 21st century, we could say that there could be three categories for gender or four categories for gender, accounting for unknown and other and so forth. However you want to account for gender though, there aren't very many states, whether it's two or four or five, that is a small number relative to total. So total different divided by total records is equal to cardinal is equal to cardinality and if that equals small then that's not favorable for indexing and if that's large 
that is favorable for indexing. Let's talk about why. Well, um, there's a Gary Larson joke. I don't know if anybody remembers Gary Larson anymore, but the Far Side cartoons and one of his collections of his cartoons has an index in the back, which is not strictly speaking necessary, of course, but the, the A's are blank, the B's are blank, the C's are blank. Everything is completely blank until you get to T. And then when you get to T, there's an index saying the one about the hunters, the one about the spider family, the one about. So every single solitary cartoon is indexed according to the one about. And of course, it makes the index much less easy to use and much less useful overall. And that's just a joke in that case. But the idea is fairly similar when it comes to the cardinality of the attribute you're considering indexing. If they're, you know, okay, so say simplest case, million people in our table, two gender states, male and female, indexing all of the males and providing a pointer to each and every male record is only going to reduce the size of the database roughly by half. And so it's like looking up the, uh, the term the in the back of the book index and finding 50 bazillion different entrance, entries and then having to track them all down. It does not narrow your search pretty particularly well if the cardinality is small. So it doesn't help all that much. So indexing gender, not such a great idea. Indexing a unique identifier is a great idea. It's such a good idea that MySQL does it automatically. Anytime you create a primary key, MySQL automatically and without your having to do anything creates an index to use because there the cardinality is quite high and looking up a unique value is, is exactly that. You're finding the value and you're looking for the one and only place that that value exists in the table by definition. Makes indexing very valuable, weighs strongly in its favor. So that's not to say that there aren't occasions where you might find indexing a low cardinality attribute like gender advantageous. It does not, however, weigh in the favor of so indexing. And then three is probably the most common sense, um, uh, but it's also really worth mentioning. Search and filter likely, likelihood. Uh, and here, pretty common sense. Yes implies pro-indexing and no implies not. So index, indices are only useful, well, with an asterisk, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Indexes are generally only useful if they're used. They're used in queries, and they, therefore, should be limited to those attributes that you anticipate are going to be used regularly for people having questions or transactions needing information that the database is required to answer. So if you're contemplating creating an index involving an attribute that you have no realistic expectation will ever involve indexing, or searching rather, or sorting or filtering, then you might want to think twice. Uh, you want to index those things that are going to be put into productive use. So those are the three things. Let me talk briefly about the asterisk that I provided around searching. There is one other useful mechanism that doesn't involve explicit search conditions, and that is uh, join-oriented attributes. We mentioned primary keys are indexed automatically. They're indexed automatically because they're very useful in allowing information that has been normalized and thus broken across multiple tables they're very useful in enabling us to efficiently bring that information back together again and to link it up correctly. Uh, in the absence of that sort of indexing, your relational database will perform quite poorly indeed. Uh, okay, so bottom line, read versus write. If you've got lots of reads, then index more. Cardinality of a given attribute that you're thinking about indexing, 
if it has a lot of different unique values relative to the total number of observations in the database, then that favors indexing. And finally, if people are planning on using that attribute uh, to search or to filter, that weighs in favor of the attribute as well. Fairly common sense. Uh, there's a lot of additional wrinkles that uh, the deeper we go. We certainly could talk about multi-attribute indices or indexes. It's indexes in uh, RDBMS land for whatever reason. Uh, and we could also talk about different kinds of indexes and the difference between hashing, which does not support um, greater than, less than style searching and so forth. But I wanted to keep it very general and uh, give you the, the most basic rules of thumb. In the next video, uh, I want to show you a, an actual concrete instance of the potential performance impact of sensible indexing. So stay tuned for that, study hard, and I'll see you online.